Hello, I'm back once again. I am so consistent at being inconsistent. That is me in a nutshell. But I am back today with a video on a waiting review. So for those who don't know what a waiting review is, you can enable this inside of Halo. What this allows you to do is before you generate invoices for your customers for billable ticket time, you can review it. The problem is, and I'm going to call it version one, bear with me here, version one, there was tons of things missing from there and it kind of sucked. So I was like, yeah, it's good to have it, but it a yeah, little bit like luster. Halo then fixed it. And when I say fixed it, they fixed all the entries showing up correctly. The problem is, is that they didn't sort out any of the grouping. So you had these like two items. I think it was contract and non-contract or something similar. Um, we didn't know if there's overages, if there's going to be invoiced or not. So Q Connor Fagan coming in. I'm not saying there's much here apart from spam Tim's inbox. Sorry, Tim. But essentially, um, I worked a lot with the Halo team just to, you know, help them understand what I think needs to be done from an MSP perspective in terms of, you know, reviewing your tickets on a monthly basis. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect yet. And if it doesn't work properly, don't blame me. I just try to help in this situation. But essentially, there's now five categories under a waiting review. I'm just going to move my tiny little face out of the way. Here we go. Coming on a journey with me to the top of the screen. There we go. So you'll now see under awaiting review five sections. You'll see no charge. You'll see non-contract prepay. You'll see contract prepay. You'll see contract prepay overage and contract prepay included. Now, the way I recommend handling this is to basically start going through each section. Don't just click away in review and try and handle it all in there. It'd be way too complicated, especially if you're getting kind of the first time you've looked at this since the change. There's going to be like thousands and thousands of actions in there. So the first thing to do is click no charge. Now I'm going to make some entries with you both in a minute. With you both? With you all. There could be two of you. There could be more. With you all to... Um, show you how stuff gets in these categories but essentially i would start with no charge i would then start with any included stuff against your contracts then i would look at any overage this is stuff that's going to be invoiced um, i then look at non-contract prepay this again is going to be invoiced this is going to appear in ready for invoicing and the time you've kind of done top to bottom up and then down what you should be left with is any anomalies and um, the only thing i've seen appear in here at the minute is if someone sets a charge rate on a ticket and puts no time in it kind of this is a bit of a catch-all for the most part you should never need to worry about this middle one this is literally a catch-all and it's a good job it was here because i asked him to remove it and tim said no let's give him all the options respect tim the only time i've seen anything appear in here outside of the other categories is is that contract rate with no charge so what i'm going to do today and i've not tested this in my environment this is another sandbox i've got recently is i'm going to try and simulate how tickets come in here and why they come into each category so so let's do this together so i'm just going to make a new ticket let's full screen this up here let's do this you don't need to worry about what i'm doing other than the fact i'm making a ticket now, if you got this far in the video and you can't make a ticket, you're probably jumping the gun a little bit, I'll be honest. Oh, ticket billing category is mandatory. You see, what even is this? Oh, yes. I was testing for a customer. Uh, and then going to close this, and I'm just going to put in two hours of no charge. There we go. So now when I go to invoices awaiting review, there should be correct one entry in there because I've just made it and it should appear under no charge. That is because the charge type is no charge. It shouldn't, yeah, good. It shouldn't, as it doesn't, appear under any other section. So no charge is literally showing you tickets where someone has set the action or the charge rate on the action of no charge. Remember, a waiting reviewer lets you review each action, not a ticket. Um, it's very important to remember that. So no charge is here, no charge, brilliant. Next, I'm gonna do a ticket with a charge. We're just using Acorn Construction here. Now, I don't think I have any agreements for this, but we'll soon find out. There we go, two hours. So now if I go to invoices, there's obviously two. The original no charge that we had from doing the no charge rate, and then non-contract prepay is now two hours to invoice. You see it here on the right-hand side, two hours to invoice. And it shouldn't, as it doesn't, appear anywhere else. So these are the two, basically, that you're going to be using a lot if, A, there's no charge, which, you know, could be across any ticket, whether it's inside or outside of an agreement. 
and a non-contract prepay. Now, a lot of the customers that I work with, this should be pretty much always empty because we always make an agreement, whether it's you know included hours or zero hour contracts, we always make a contract stroke agreement for that. I'm just gonna whip up a very quick agreement uh, if I knew how to use Halo. Uh, let me just see what Terry's has got going on, okay. Let's just give Terry everything a minute and unlimited hours, there we go. Unlimited hours for Terry. So Terry's Chocolates has an agreement, unlimited hours per month, charge types, everything's gonna get caught inside that agreement. And when did it start? Started in the past, fantastic. So now if I make a ticket for Terry's, just an incident, category doesn't matter. Close this with two hours of remote support. We should now see that we have three actions in here. Again, I'm only done one action per ticket. But as you can see here that the uh, Terry's isn't showing in contract prepay overage. Well, actually, in my case, that hasn't been shown anywhere. Okay, is that because that customer is broken? Billing? Yes, it is. There is a default pay as you go. So again, this is where it can really help you troubleshoot if your agreements are working correctly or not. So I'll just slow down now. I've understood what's happened there. So essentially, I'm expecting any ticket from Terry's Chocolate Orange to be caught by an agreement. And it's not. It's not showing me under any of these contract settings. It's showing me under non-contract. So the first thing I do is go, that's interesting. Why hasn't this ticket for Terry's been caught against an agreement? The first thing I always do, as you just saw, is go to the customer Terry's Chocolates, go to the billing section, and scroll down to billing plan combinations. Now, when I do my builds, I handle all of these at the agreement level. However, if you were to handle it outside or was to delete an agreement, sometimes they can get stuck in here, so just bear that in mind. Now, what this is telling me, sorry, this scroll wheel is horrific on this new mouse, is um, every site, every ticket type, by default, as in sequence one, again, this is tiered, waterfall, the first sequence is gonna go as pay as you go. Nothing in my environment right now is going to hit the contract. So what I'm just gonna do is scroll down and delete that pay as you go. I'm just gonna go back to that ticket, which is this one here for Terry's, and I'm just gonna click the recalculate billing. And now you'll see it says contract hours, two hours. If you wondered why I was pausing for then, I was kind of waiting for the screen to refresh and I'm at, okay, there we go. And I missed it. Um, so now if I go to invoices, awaiting review, I still have three. However, this time, the third one is A, showing me an agreement, but is B, showing me no hours to invoice. If I go to contract prepay at the bottom and click included, it will show me that this action on this ticket is now included in that agreement there's zero hours to invoice we're not going to invoice them anything and two hours of the action on that ticket are getting caught against the agreement it will also show in, it will also show in contract prepay because this is a um, what's the word i'm looking for um, accumulation of both the overage and the included plus any anomalies the last one I'm going to try and simulate is simulate, stimulate, simulate, demonstrate. That'll do. The last one I'm going to demonstrate is the contract prepay overage. So if I make an agreement for, this should be fun. Uh, let's do Mario and Luigi, Luigi's Pizza Palace. I hate this mouse. Any good wireless mouse recommendations? This Razer Pro Click. Awful. Right. Zero hours per period. Number of periods, no end date. When did it start? Ah, January the 1st. Okay. What gets caught by this agreement? Again, zero hours per month. Okay. What gets caught by this? Everything. Let's assume this is a break fix customer, but we want to be able to track under an agreement what they do, what they don't have, what recurring invoices they have, what they do per period, just at a glance rather than having to run reports. This is why I 
sometimes build these zero hour agreements. It really depends on the time scale we're working towards, the outcome we're going to get from it. Um, there's many ways or reasons why I would and wouldn't build this way. But essentially, Mario's and Luigi's has a zero hours contract that encapsulates everything. Now, I'm just going to go and check before I do a ticket that Mario and Luigi's Pizza Palace has nothing set up in here. Okay, looking good. Mario and Luigi's. Submit. Close. Let's do on-site support. Two hours. Go to invoices. That again has now shown me a few things. So I can see Mario and Luigi's Pizza Palace. This action on this ticket has been caught against this agreement. But this time it's saying hours to invoice. Now I know because I know it's going to appear in the overage section because it's a zero hour agreement or contract, but it is, has no time encapsulation. So it's not like they're getting five hours a month or unlimited hours per month. It is just a break fix contract, pay as you go contract, if you will. And it's being caught here. Now, when it comes down to reviewing these things, um, the only time, so if you didn't know, you can select the little tick in the top left and click edit. The only time you want to use do not bill is a either if you're in non-contract prepay or contract overage and you don't want to invoice them. You never really want to do do not bill in no charge or in contract prepay as it will basically not log it against the agreement. What you'll want to just do is click review. So just to reiterate on that one, review should be fine for everyone unless there is overage that you do not want to invoice for, in which case you would then do yes, do not bill, do not invoice this customer for this time. And that is pretty much it, to be honest. Um, I quite like the changes. I think they're quite easy to get your head around once you understand what it is they're actually doing. So for one last time, no charge is actions on tickets with no charge. Non-contract prepay is actions on tickets that aren't being caught by an agreement or contract. Contract prepay is an encapsulation of both contract prepay overage and contract prepay included. Contract prepay overage is any time on a ticket that is being logged against an agreement but is going over their time. Could be outside of the working hours, could be overage in time. Included is exactly that. The time is being caught, handled, or the bill is being caught and handled by the agreement. We're not going to invoice for this time. This is fully included. Um, and that is pretty much it. Any questions, you know where to find me. I hope this helps some of you understand this. Um, I have requested a few more features from Halo to, to make this a little bit better. For instance, you know, controlling the filter on when so we can actually filter by the date. Um, if I get an update, I will put it in the description below. Uh, I'm failing that. Have a lovely day. I've been Connor and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye bye.